All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Amedio602, and today I'd like to give you my initial impressions on the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Season 5 patch. I killed the driver. I shot him right out of his car. There were two new multiplayer maps added. That's Oil Rig and Harbor. And I played a couple of games on each of these maps. I was not a big fan of the Oil Rig map. I felt like the spawns were off, the flow was off. The map felt very familiar, but it didn't play at all like any map that I can remember. So I kind of feel like this was maybe a half remake of a different oil rig map, but I just, I didn't care for this one, folks. Oh, a three-piece. The other new map, Suldal Harbor, and I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but Suldal Harbor, I thought that was a pretty good map. Played pretty well, flowed pretty well. There were only two different elevations as far as I could tell. Well, I guess kind of, there is kind of this mid-tier elevation on these boxes. But all in all, I felt the flow for that map was pretty good. It felt like a three-lane map. That's really all I have to say about the multiplayer, so let's skip over and take a real quick look at this battle pass. For me, I'm really mostly interested in these guns. We've got an SMG called the ISO, or ISO. My initial impressions on this gun are that it's pretty weak and probably not worth messing with in Warzone or multiplayer. So I kind of doubt that I'm even going to bother leveling that one up. On the other hand though, we have the AN-94 Assault Rifle, and this is a throwback to Black Ops 2, and I believe it was also in Black Ops 3 and maybe even Black Ops 4 as well. The distinguishing feature of this assault rifle is that the first couple of rounds after you pull the trigger, that's not each magazine, but each time you pull the trigger, are going to fire just a little bit faster than the rest of the magazine. That's just a neat little feature that this weapon has going for it. Personally, I think the AN-94 will end up being a mid-tier assault rifle. It's definitely not enough to outgun the M4, the Growl, or the FAL for the top spot. But speaking of those guns, there is going to be a weapon balancing patch coming soon, so we'll just have to wait and see how all that plays out. Moving on to the changes for Warzone itself, we've got a new mode as well as two major changes to the map. The new mode is called Mini Royale, and this is a trio mode, which is advertised as a fast-paced battle royale in condensed areas of Verdansk. This mode plays pretty much as advertised, and I'm really enjoying this mode. The way it works is you start at about circle number three or four, with only about half the number of players on the map. Pretty much as soon as the map starts, you're going to get a loadout drop within the first couple of minutes, and shortly thereafter, the gulag's going to close. For players like me that just really enjoy dropping in and the ends of the games and don't really get into the middle portion of the game, which tends to play a little bit slower, I think this is a great mode. And so far, it is definitely one of the stronger limited time modes that I've seen in Call of Duty Battle Royales. The only other modes that even come close to it, in my opinion, are Alcatraz Mode and Hot Pursuit in Call of Duty Blackout. As for the two changes for the Warzone map, obviously you've got the stadium opened up for anyone who watched the in-game cinematic opening cutscene. And I've gotta say folks, I am more than a little bit disappointed with how the stadium ends up feeling. You get in there and it kinda reminds me of Harry Potter when he's at the World Quidditch Cup. There are just tents all over inside the stadium. And there are barely any weapons on the ground in here, way too many doors going in and out, and I'm just not a big fan. A couple things I really do like though, is I really like that you don't have to go around Stadium anymore. That was always kind of a pain in the neck. They've also eliminated the campers on top of the Stadium problem, because now you can use a rope to get up to the top of the Stadium. So there are a few silver linings to this cloud, but dropping a Stadium, well, that's just not for me. The other major map change made to Warzone was the addition of a moving loot train. And I've got to say guys, I got this one wrong. I thought that the loot train in the opening cinematic would be what blew up Stadium, but that's not what happened at all. What we got instead was a train that just moves around the map. And as far as I can tell, it always starts in the bottom center of the map, right near the port area. There are some chests on the train, there's an ammo refill, and there's usually a few guys dropping there right now because it's still new. Long term, I don't think this is going to be a very popular drop spot, but I think it'll be pretty popular for people coming back from the Gulag. Speaking of the Gulag in Warzone, there were also some significant changes to that, and I really like the approach that Infinity Ward has decided to take with weapons in the Gulag. And that approach they've decided to take is that they are going to be rotating sets of weapons every week, and I think this is fantastic. When the Gulag first started, it was just pistols and shotguns, and I feel like everyone just kind of got sick and tired of that, especially that 357 Magnum. After the pistols and shotguns, we'd moved to something a little bit more common, with assault rifles and SMGs, and after that we got stuck with sniper rifles for what I feel like was way too long. And so what Infinity Ward is doing now is they are going to be rotating those Gulag weapons once a week, and I think that's a good change. I'm 100% on board with that. There were a few other minor weapon buffs to Warzone, but the big weapon tuning patch is coming up here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. One other thing I'd like to hit on real quick in Warzone is the footstep audio. I feel like the audio is quite a bit different in Season 5 than it was in Season 4. 
Officially, Infinity Ward has said that they have added a brief decay period when transitioning from heavy footsteps such as sprint or tactical sprint to lighter footsteps such as walking. This addresses players immediately becoming quiet upon slowing down from fast movements. Unofficially, I feel like there were some other changes and the audio, for me at least, in Season 5 feels a whole lot different than it was in Season 4. This should lead to fewer situations where somebody just appears from nowhere and you didn't hear them at all, but we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. What other major things got added in the Season 5 update that you're really excited about? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to drop a like because it really helps me out. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on the best Call of Duty tips, tricks, and tactics in my future uploads. And as always, thank you very much for watching.